Well, praise the Lord, and welcome to another exciting Bible class. It's a thrill to be able to come into your heart and your home and break the bread of life, the word of Almighty God, the source of absolute truth. Truth you can live by and truth you can die by. Amen? Truth that can transform our lives radically for Jesus Christ. You know, this is the living Word. Jesus is the living Word of God. And so when we read His written Word, praise God, and He breathes it into our spirit, we grab a hold of it, it becomes a living Word in us as we fellowship with Christ. And praise God, it's, it's an honor to be able to invest in our own personal lives by penetrating truth, especially in the day and age in which we live today. We need to penetrate God's truth and thank God for His Word today. I have a very simple lesson. I'm not going to hold you very long. If you'll turn to 2 Timothy chapter 4, and we're going to start reading at verse 6. The great Apostle Paul, perhaps if not definitely, the greatest example for Christ that Christianity ever produced. A champion of the faith wrote these words. He said, 2 Timothy 4, 6, For I am already being poured out as a drink offering, and the time of my departure is at hand. You see, Paul had reached the end of his journey of faith. He had come to the climax of his life upon the earth. My departure is at hand. Pay particular attention to verse 7. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Finally, there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give to me on that day, and not to me only, but also to all who have loved his appearing. If there was one thought that I'd want to leave you with today, it would be the title of this study. Finishing strong for the cause of Christ. Now, please notice with me at the beginning of this teaching, the Apostle Paul didn't start out too good. If you've read your Bible, you know that he once was named Saul. The Lord changed his name after the Damascus Road experience. You can read about it in the book of Acts. And Saul of Tarsus later become Paul, the great Apostle. But Saul of Tarsus hated Jesus Christ in the beginning. He started out by persecuting the church, thinking he was being a good religionist and doing God a favor. He looked upon Jesus as a heretic at first. He killed the followers of Jesus. He was the man that was holding the clothes of the men that were stoning Stephen the great martyr of the early church. But you see, Paul that came to a point in his life where he had a radical encounter with Jesus Christ. Jesus knocked him down on the road to Damascus with his presence. You know the story. If you read it, Paul saw the Lord. And Jesus said to him, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? It's hard to kick against the pricks. And Paul became blinded. And he received Jesus as his Lord and Savior. And God transformed him into the great apostle to the Gentiles. And here he's writing that he fought a good fight. He finished his race. Hallelujah. And he kept the faith. You see, it's not how you start that's all that important. But it's how you finish the course of your life that will determine your eternal destiny. 
the Bible says it's not he who starts the race, but it's he that finisheth. The Bible says it's he that endures to the end that was saved. How can you and I today stand as Paul and millions of others have done at the end of our race and say, we have finished strong for God? That's a question. That's the question that we must answer within our own heart. Now I will tell you at the outset of this lesson that this message was inspired in my heart by a sermon that I heard Tommy Barnett preach. And it is taken, the sermon that he preached was taken from the book called Finishing Strong by Steve Farrar. Listen as I read you something. Most people who read the book have heard about Billy Graham. But what about Chuck Templeton? Or what about Bron Clifford? Have you ever heard of them? Did you know that they were also packing out auditoriums in 1945 when Billy Graham first preached to large crowds? All three of these young men rose to prominence in their middle 20s. One seminary president, after hearing Chuck Templeton, a brilliant, dynamic preacher, called him the most gifted and talented young preacher in America. Templeton and Graham became very close friends. They started preaching together with the Youth for Christ organization. Most observers thought that Templeton would be the one who would go to the top. One magazine wrote a feature article calling Templeton the Babe Ruth of evangelism. Bron Clifford was another gifted young fireball evangelist. Many believed that Clifford was the most gifted powerful preacher to come up in the church for many centuries. People lined up for hours to hear him preach. When he went to Baylor University to give a discourse, they actually cut the ropes of the bells of the tower. They wanted nothing to interfere with his preaching. For two and a half hours, the students of Baylor University sat on the edges of their seats as he gave a dissertation on Christ and the Philosopher's Stone. At age 25, Clifford touched more lives, influenced more leaders, and set more attendance records than any other clergyman in American history. National leaders vied for his attention. He was tall, handsome, dashing, intelligent, sophisticated, Hollywood actually tried to cast him in the lead role for the famous movie, The Robe. He seemed to have everything. Graham Templeton and Clifford launched out of the starting block like Olympic gold medalist in 1945. Why haven't you heard of Chuck Templeton or Bron Clifford? The answer may surprise you. By 1950, Templeton had left the ministry. He pursued a radio career. He became an announcer and a newscaster, telling the world that he no longer believed Jesus Christ was the Son of God. He became an atheist. By 1950, this future Babe Ruth of preaching was not even any longer in the ballgame. By 1954, Clifford had lost his family, his ministry, and his health. Eventually, he lost his life because of addiction to alcohol. Financial irresponsibility left his wife and their two Down Syndrome children penniless. This once famous preacher died of cirrhosis of the liver at the age of 35 in a rundown hotel on the edge of Armadillo, Texas. He died unwept unhonored and unsung. Some pastors from Amarillo got together and collected enough money to buy a cheap casket. They shipped his body back to the East Coast where he was buried in a pauper's cemetery. In 1945, all three of these young men with extraordinary gifts 
We're preaching for the purpose of multiplying the church by thousands of people. But within 10 years, only one of them, Billy Graham, was still on track for Christ. You see, my friend, in the Christian life, it's not how you start, it's how you finish. A recent survey shocked me when I read it. It reported that only one out of ten who start in the ministry at age 21 serve the Lord until they're 65. They fall away from the ministry due to immorality, discouragement, liberal theology, and a love for wealth and the things of this world. You might be saying, well, that's interesting, and that was an interesting story, but I can't really relate to it because I'm not in the ministry. Well, may I rock your boat today by suggesting to you that every Christian Every child of God is called to be in the ministry of Jesus Christ. You may not be a pastor. You may not be an evangelist. You may not be a teacher or, or one of the five-fold ministry gifts, prophet, apostle, pastor, evangelist, or teacher, but you're called to win souls to Christ. You're called to live an above-average life to be better than average in a society that desperately needs witnesses for God. When you receive the call to salvation, my friend, it is not only a call that will simply prepare you for heaven, it's a call that will prepare you for ministry. It's a call that will prepare you to circle the globe with the love of Jesus Christ. You may never leave your community. But through your giving, you can send missionaries all around the world. You may never, ever do anything for God except teach a Sunday school class, but who knows if you're not teaching a future Billy Graham. So I heard a housewife say the other day that she was asked, what is it that you do? And she says, oh, I'm only a housewife. Let me tell you, that little baby that you're wiping their behind, and you're changing those diapers, and maybe all the time you're doing that, you got a dream. Man, one of these days I'm going to get my Gloria Copeland ministry going. Glory to God, one of these days I'm going to get my Ann Jimenez ministry going. Hallelujah. I ought to be teaching a woman's Bible study somewhere. Let me tell you something. Don't hurry, God. Now, God may allow you to do those teaching ministries, and, and maybe he's called you, but that little backside that you're wiping, that diaper that you're changing, could be a future prophet that will shake the world for the cause of Jesus Christ. You have a very important job for God to do. Don't let discouragement cause you to get out of the race. Our aim with this simple little message today is to encourage you to finish strong for Jesus Christ. To encourage you to endure in the face of affliction. To endure in the face of every adversary and to keep your place in the race of eternal life. Hallelujah to God. Father, as I utter these few words, Lord, I would ask that you would bless us. God, don't let us become castaways, but Father, send your word deeply to our hearts and lives today and change us, God. Show us the areas in which we need to change. And bring us to the foot of the cross, Father. Empower us with a fresh anointing and pour out your Spirit upon us in Jesus' name. Father, take these simple words and anoint them now. And we give you the praise and the glory. And everybody would say, Amen and Amen. The great Apostle Paul that started out opposing the church and wound up his life as he laid his head on a Roman chopping block and they took it from his shoulders. Do you know that he died with a joy in his heart? Do you know that he died saying, I'm ready to be offered? The time of my departure is at hand. I fought a good fight. I finished 
the race and I've kept the faith. If you're going to finish strong in these last days that we're living in, we have to understand two things. What motivates an individual to finish strong in the race for God? That's the first one. And the second one, we have to understand the ingredients that it's going to take in your life for you to finish strong and keep the faith. The motivation, the motivational end for some people is a big problem. It's, it's a big difficulty. Men enter the ministry with many different motives. Some do it for a paycheck. That's not a very good reason. I've been preaching since 1981, and I'm going to tell you, I'm, I, haven't made a, uh, I haven't made a billion dollars, and most of what I do make, I give into the gospel, amen? Other men join the ministry because they want to see their name in lights. They want to go on TV. They want to go on radio. I've done both of those things. Let me tell you something. It's more pressure and more responsibility to be in the ministry than you dare realize. If you think it's glory, if you think it's glamour, if you think it's prestige, you're wrong. You've missed the point by a million miles. God calls us into this ministry. And it's a body ministry, church. Every one of us has a part to play in God's church. Every one of us is a member of the army of God Almighty. And He needs every one of us to fulfill our role in these last days of bringing in the last great harvest of the earth before Jesus comes back. Hallelujah. The, the motivation to finish strong for God must be a love for God, first of all. We serve Him because we love Him. For God so loved the world, He sent His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth on Him should not perish but have everlasting life. You know the Scripture. John 3.16 And because He loved us, and because He sent a Savior for us that we don't have to go to hell, we don't have to die and go lost for all of eternity, but praise be to God, we can rise up with wings of eagles into the kingdom of God, saved and born again, that produces a love for God in, our, in us, in our hearts. And that love for God must be the primary motivation for us to finish strong. And secondly, we finish strong because of conviction. There has to come a time in our life when we reach out for the truth, we receive the truth, we embrace the truth, and we live for and die by the truth of Almighty God. Can you say amen? So many people go through their entire life living for themselves. And when they get to the end of the race, they find out that they're the most miserable, dissatisfied, unfulfilled person because they never loved God. They never lived for God. They only lived for themselves. And when their self, when their true self is revealed to them, hmm, they're so disappointed. But brother, you don't have to finish your life that way. Sister, you don't have to go out of this world that way. You can finish strong in the race of the Christian life if you will love God and be committed to the truth of God and surrendering of your life to the will of Jesus Christ. That's the motivation in, in a nutshell. Now we could talk on this probably for months and never scratch the surface. Can you say amen? The Word of God is so deep so far out beyond us, I, I never tire of reading it, pouring over its pages and letting it minister to my spirit man. I, I never tire. I've read it until I've burned holes in my head where my eyeballs should be. I mean, I've just read it and read it and permeated its pages. But listen, we must penetrate it. 
we must discover that our purpose in life I heard a preacher say one time, the human heart, the human soul, the human spirit is so big, marijuana can't fill it up, Jack Daniels can't fill it up, sex can't fill it up, rock and roll can't fill it up, country western can't fill it up, entertainment can't fill it up, but the soul of man is so big that only God can fill it up. Only God can bring purpose to your life. Only God can bring fulfillment to your life. Only you, as a Christian, being in the center of God's will, can fill up your heart to satisfy the deep longing desires of a saved soul. Only God. Only the love of Christ can cause you to finish strong. There are adversaries. There are adversaries galore that will come to you in the midst of your opportunities. Uh, I'm trying to remember a little quote that I was reading. I'm having a hard time doing it, but there's, there's two types of people in the world. This is basically what it says. The one, he sees opportunity in his adversity. And the other type of person only sees adversity in all of his opportunities. Now we're going to encounter some opposition in our race. We're going to encounter a devil that's a bad devil. The Bible says in St. John 10 and 10, the thief, the devil, comes to steal, kill, and destroy, but... Jesus said, I am come that they might have life and have it more abundantly. We're going to encounter opposition from the devil. We're going to encounter opposition from people. We're going to encounter adverse circumstances that will try to get us out of the race. And if we are to finish strong in our life for Christ... We have to make up our mind right now, this moment, that I am not defeated because greater is He that is in me, God, than he that is in the world, Satan. You follow me? Hallelujah. You see, there is a diabolical spirit in the church today that I call the spirit of a victim. Everybody wants to feel like they're a victim. The black people think they're a victim. The white people think they're victims. Men think they're victims and women think they're victims. Everybody thinks they're a victim. But church, no matter what has happened to you, you are not a victim if you believe this Bible. This Bible says, if God be for me, who can be against me? Hallelujah to His name. This Bible says, greater is He that is in me than he that is in the world. This Bible says that nothing... Nothing, nothing can separate me from the love of Christ. I am not a victim. And if we are to finish strong in the race of life for God and for the Lord Jesus Christ, we need to cast off the chains of being a victim. And we need to take upon ourselves the mantle, the anointing from God of being a victor. Hallelujah forever. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God forever. We are victorious in Christ. Victorious over every sin. Victorious over every tragedy. Victorious over every disease. Victorious, victorious, victorious. We are the overcoming, conquering army of Jehovah. Hallelujah. And God has anointed us to win. Now the absolute starting place for any of us to have any purpose in our life whatsoever, I have to, to kind of stop and say this because these messages get into the hands of so many people and some of them aren't saved yet, but you're going to be, praise God. But anyway, the absolute starting place for any of us to have a purposeful, meaningful life at all is to accept and receive 
the salvation of the Lord Jesus Christ. For us to bow our knee in repentance and submit ourselves to Jesus Christ is the first step. And in order for us to finish strong, we're going to have to, number one, endure opposition. I don't feel today that I should tell you that you look pretty at the starting line. You know, you know what I mean? I want to see how you look after you've been in the race a while. So many people today are getting off course with God because of sin. I mean, you, you started out doing real well for Jesus, and then that short-skirted, made-up, eyelash-beaten, down-looking thing across the hall started winking at you. You know what I mean? And pretty soon you're not in the race anymore. You started out pretty well, but you decided to just take that one little excursion. And the next thing we know, you're like those other two preachers. You never hear from you again. You're not in the race anymore. No, you might have looked beautiful at the starting line. But the title of our message today is Finishing Strong. Enduring to the end. Pushing through all opposition and coming out on the other side victorious in Jesus Christ. We've, we've discussed our motivation and now we need to look at the ingredients that it's going to take in your life and mine if we are to come to the end of our race strong in God. I don't believe it's God's plan for any of us, for any of us to fail. I don't believe it's God's plan for you or for me to lose our way and miss heaven. Wouldn't Think of what a tragedy that would be. I've been preaching in the ministry since 1981. This is 1997. What do I want to quit for? I've invested too many years. I've, oh God, I know too much now. I've, I've heard too much sermons now. I've heard so much word. I've put out so much money into the kingdom of God. I don't want to quit. I don't want to fall by the wayside and become a casualty of life. I'm just not about ready to give up. I don't care how hard it gets. I don't care what temptation the devil tries to cook up against me. I'm going to do my best and when I run out of ability, thank God the Holy Spirit will come and give me God's ability and to do my best to stay close to God and under the blood of Jesus. No matter what the devil throws at me, I don't plan on quitting. I want to finish strong. When I leave this world, hallelujah to God forevermore. When I leave this world, I want them to be able to say about my life, there was a man that loved the Lord. There was a man that spent himself pursuing souls for Christ. There was a man that, that fed hungry people and put clothes on their back, not because he wanted to do it to be a star, but because he loved God. I want to finish strong. I'm reminded of a great, great, saint of God that passed away not too long ago, Dr. Lester Summerall. Now that man finished strong. When he went home to heaven to be with Jesus, he didn't go out beaten and broken. He went out just as strong. He went out stronger than the day he gave his heart to Christ as a tuberculosis-ridden 17-year-old. God healed him. He circumnavigated the planet preaching the gospel for 66 years plus. Now please turn the cassette over for the continuation of this series. He told Pastor Rod partially at the funeral of his wife, Dr. Summerall's wife, Dr. Summerall told Pastor partially, he said, Mama was the only one that I ever kissed in all my life. What a testimony. What a testimony. He said, 
She's the only woman I ever loved. And now I'm about the loneliest man on the face of the earth. But he kept heaven in his eye. And he lived a few years longer and he won a few more souls and he finished strong. You see, there's oppositions that come. And many of us today just simply need to realize that life is never going to be a bed of roses. You can live for Jesus and die and go to heaven. You can live for the devil and die and go to hell. But either way, life is not easy. We've got, a, we've got another group of people running all over the world today saying it's not fair. That's not fair. It's not fair. This isn't fair. And that's not fair. And this isn't fair. Life's not fair. Are, are you hearing me? Life's not fair. Nothing fair about it. You can thank the devil for that. Nothing fair about life. But that's not the question, folks. The question is, when you finish, are you saved? When you finish, have you left a legacy behind for God? And I want to tell you something. There's, there may be, and probably is several of you, hundreds of you, thousands of you listening at me right now, that you're 50, 60, 70, 80 years old. And you say, hey, I, I'm just now giving my life to Christ. And I don't have time to leave a legacy. Yes, you do. You can touch one heart today. You can touch one poor person today with the love of Jesus Christ. You can lead one person today in the sinner's prayer and get them to receive Christ into their life. Yes, you can. And you can finish strong for God. Yes, you can do it. God's call is not to the young nor the old. It's to all men. He said, I would that all men everywhere would repent and come into the knowledge of the truth. That's what he said. Today you can pray. You can leave a legacy of prayer starting right now. You can pray for Africa. You can pray for those poor Christians in that hellhole called Vietnam and, and China over in Southeast Asia where they're getting killed every day because of their faith in Christ. You can pray for them. You can write a letter. You can write a letter to a pastor or an evangelist or a minister today or even a friend and you can encourage them with an encouraging scripture from the Bible. You can do something for God today. You know how I love to get your letters? Oh, praise God. I, I love to get your letters. Sometimes your letters come in that mailbox right at one of my lowest days. <clears throat> Excuse me while I have some water here. I mean, just about the time the bills of the ministry are six inches thick on the desk, and the, the money that has come in is about an inch thick. You know, that's five inches worth of difference there. Just about the time the Lord tells us to take some new territory and we don't have the finances. Just about the time we receive several critical comments from people we thought were our friends. Hey, man, I love when your letters come of encouragement. And so many of you have given me a scripture say, uh, we believe God spoke this to us for you. It means so much. You can finish strong for Jesus Christ. It's going to take perseverance. It's going to take endurance. And thirdly, if we are to finish strong, it's going to take faith. Now, if you want another word for faith, just say trust. Trust. We're going to have to learn how to trust God again. I didn't say now, pastor, if you're listening to me, preacher, whoever you are, doctor, lawyer, whoever you are trying to do something for God, I didn't say we have to trust our program and trust our plan, trust our policy, trust our procedure. We've got to learn to put our faith and our confidence and our trust in God. I don't trust my business thinking or business intelligence to run this ministry. I don't have a whole lot of business sense, to be honest with you. I trust the Holy Spirit to lead me. I put my faith in Him. 
I don't trust my preaching ability to minister to your heart. I'm not the best preacher in the world. I trust the power of the Holy Spirit to penetrate your life with truth. I don't put my trust in myself. I don't put my trust in my denomination. I don't put my trust in a committee. And neither should you. We must learn to put our faith in God. If you'll read in the book of Genesis, chapter 1, verse 1, it says, In the beginning... And this next word just blows my mind. Talking about faith. In the beginning, God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Are you getting what he expects us to believe? In the beginning, God. Now that's faith. Notice he doesn't take the time to justify his saying that statement. Notice he doesn't bother to take the time to explain himself to us. He just wants us to receive it by faith. And if we're going to finish strong in this final generation for Christ, we're going to have to have perseverance, endurance, and faith. We're going to have to have a strong prayer life. If we're going to finish our race, we have to do it on our knees. And God, you know, now, now to you if, you, if you are a carnally minded thinker, that might seem like finishing weak. Well, here comes the guy across the finish line, but he's got to crawl across. No, there's no weakness in that. And we're not crawling. Hmm. <laughs> When we finish this race on our knees, it's because we're trusting in Jesus Christ. And he carries us across the finish line. Hallelujah. And not because we're so wore out and tired that we just can't hardly make it. He carries us on his shoulders. The victorious, overcoming church. And we carry him as the king of the church. We go across that finish line strong, but if we're going to, we have to do it on our knees. We have to be a people of prayer. It's not our strength that's going to get us across the finish. It's not our talent that's going to carry us across the finish. It's not our ability. It's not our religious intelligence. It's Jesus Christ, the King of kings, the Lord of lords. And we bow to Him on our knees. And we worship Him. And we praise Him and we lay out our love and our request to Him. We have to be people of prayer. We have to be people of miracle. For some of us, it's going to take a miracle if we are going to finish strong. We have to believe in the unexpected. We have to believe in the power of God to carry us through, to finish strong. Let's read our Scripture text again. I haven't done this message justice, but I'm, I'm preaching out of the overflow this afternoon. Praise God. This morning's lesson was a great one. And I'm just sort of preaching out of the overflow. If the Lord is willing, we may put these uh, tapes of these sessions in a series designed to spark vision in these last days. You see, I believe God's people are people of vision. The Bible says in the last days, your young men shall see visions and your old men shall dream dreams. And they're going to be wonderful visions and wonderful dreams of God's glory and God's majesty. And it's going to take you and I in the body of Christ being a visionary, being a dreamer for God, if we are going to finish strong in the race of life. We're going to have to be a visionary people. And you know one of the things, before we read our text again, one of the things that will absolutely kill your vision in life is sin. If we're going to finish strong, we're going to have to stay away from sin. The Bible says that we should shun the very appearance of evil. If it even looks bad, don't do it. 
If it even looks unchristlike, we should put it far from us. So that God's vision can flow from heaven by the power of His Spirit into our spirit and out through us to a lost and dying world that needs vision today because the Bible says without a vision the people will perish. My God, man, they're dying all around us. The church needs a fresh vision in order to finish strong. Hallelujah. Are you prepared today to lay it all out on the line for Christ? Are you prepared today to finish the race? If you were to die in the next five minutes, and, and I know that we're used to saying this little phrase to, to, get, to get people born again, but I'm talking to you Christians now. If you were to die in the next five minutes, would God be able to look at your life and say, you finished strong. Just ask your... Just ask that question. I pray God you can. I know you can. If you'll keep the faith. Amen? If you'll just persevere. If you'll just realize that you can't be defeated... That devil can't defeat you unless you allow him to defeat you. Are you hearing me today? Praise the Lord. Let's read Paul's words again. I fought a good fight. I have finished the race and I have kept the faith. Oh, hallelujah. I've kept the faith. I've kept the faith. Whatever you are in life, if you're saved, you work for Jesus. You hear me? Whether you're a doctor, a lawyer, a pastor, a teacher, you work for Jesus if you're saved. Jesus said you're the light of the world. <laughs> Glory to God. You're the salt of the earth. You're the preserver of this society. You are the only thing that's flavoring and saving this world. And you and I, neighbor, if you're born again, you and I are co-workers with Christ. We're doing the exact same work that Jesus started. Now here's my questions to you. Will you finish strong for Christ? Will you allow Jesus to use you as a multiplier for Him throughout your life? You know, God has gone past the days of addition. He doesn't want to any longer add to the church. God doesn't want to add to your life. Add this blessing and add that blessing and add the other blessing. And, and he doesn't want to add souls to the kingdom anymore. Uh-uh. He's past addition. He, God is into multiplication. Can I get a witness on that? God is into multiplication. He wants to multiply blessing into your life. He wants to multiply increase into your life. He wants to multiply souls into the kingdom of God through the blood of Jesus Christ. He's a God of multiple things. Will you allow Him to use you? Will you finish strong for Christ? Will you keep yourself from being one who leaves the race? You see, those who finish strong are the exceptions. Why? Why? Because when it comes to finishing strong, there's many odds that are against you. The devil's against you. The flesh is against you. And the cares of this world are against you. You could become your own worst enemy as you place your personal desires above seeking the kingdom of God. Did you, did you grab a hold of that? It's not impossible to finish strong, but it is improbable. 
if you are going to finish strong for Christ, you're going to be required to, to make some tough choices. The church needs committed Christians who are committed and dedicated to the call of Christ and the Great Commission. Now let me tell you something in closing. If you're going to finish strong, you've got many tough decisions to make in your life starting right now. Christian, if you're going to finish strong, you're going to have to choose marriage and family over divorce and brokenness. If you're going to finish strong, you're going to have to teach your children God's ways and not the world's ways. If you are going to finish strong, you're going to have to choose people over policies and programs. If you're going to finish strong for Christ, you're going to have to choose to enlarge rather than reduce your circles of love. If you're going to finish strong in the race for Christ, you're going to have to risk much rather than play it safe. To finish strong, we must choose to multiply, not just add disciples. We must choose to stand up for the truth when our critics are the loudest. We must choose to release, not control, people in ministry. That's a good one. We must choose to pray and to fast and to pray and to fast and to pray again. Multiplication is the last great end time revival. In the great revival of these end times, God has promised us that we are going to reap much quicker than we can sow. And harvest time is always the busiest time. It requires more work and more workers than we could ever possibly imagine. <laughs> Hallelujah. Will you be one of those today that God can count on to finish strong? Can God count on you today to do the work of the kingdom? It might just be a smile for, for your neighbor. It might just be a kind word or a scripture verse. But can God count on you today? Are you available for God? If God were to wake you up in the middle of the night tonight and tell you, I want you to go to Africa, would you do it? And so many people would say, yes, Brother Paxton. But God has begged you for so long to go across the street and visit the widow and visit the orphan and you turn a deaf ear to that because it seems little. If we're going to finish strong, we mustn't despise the day of small beginnings. Amen. We've got to obey God right where we are and let Him use us and become available to His call if we're going to finish strong. The risk of this last great revival will be greater than anyone has ever undertaken. Are, are you ready? Are you ready? God continues to ask the soul-winning, soul-searching question, Who shall I send? Those who finish strong are needed more than ever. As the church multiplies disciples in these last days, multitudes await the gospel. Will you be the multiplier proclaiming the good news of Jesus Christ to them? Will you be the one that will go to the waiting masses of humanity, broken, beat down by the powers of hell, and see them delivered? Will you be one who will finish strong? Don't miss this last great harvest. Get your life right with God. Turn your back on sin. The Bible says to lay aside every weight and the sin that doth so easily beset us and entangle us so that we can swiftly run the race. You see, sin is like a chain that wraps itself around your body and it prohibits you from running swiftly. And the writer of the book of Hebrews was telling us, and I believe it was Paul, was telling us 
Get that chain of sin out of the way so that you can run unhindered. So that you can finish strong in the race of life. My God, man, this is our life. This is the only life we're ever going to have. As far as this people planet is concerned, thank God we're ready to step over into eternity anytime the Lord should call us. But while we're here, let us run swiftly. They're out there everywhere waiting. The huddled masses of humanity, the bleeding, hurting ones are waiting for us to take them hope, to take them life. To take them, Jesus. Will you finish strong? Will you finish strong? Will you be the leader that God has called you to be? I urge you, I beg you. I get down on my knees before God and I beg you to respond to God's call today. Say, here I am. Send me. And I command you in Jesus' name, go and finish strong. Run swifter than you've ever run before. Risk it all to gain Christ. Father, in the name of Jesus, I'm not done with this message, but I sense the precious Holy Spirit telling me to stop, telling me to quit. God, I just pray for my brothers and my sisters today. Lord, open our hearts to receive your word. Open our eyes to see. Open us. Make us a visionary people today. Make us a prophetic people people today pour within us the capability to finish strong send the powerful holy spirit to dwell within us and enable us to finish this race strong for jesus christ and father i pray for each one under the sound of my voice right now that you would speak to them and minister to them and decisions, decisions, multitudes, multitudes in the valley of decision. There are decisions. <coughs> there are decisions being made for Christ right now, right now, right now. All over. There are decisions being made. God strengthen them. God bless them. God empower them to go.